Hello, everybody, I'm Wild. Woo! So, I'm here with another video, as in this video, I'm on my desktop screen, and that is because I'm doing another how to, uh, which I'm also just gonna call a tutorial. So, my last tutorial was in November 12th, I believe, of 2016, and now it's next year, and I wanted to do another tutorial because I completely forgot about that series, and but I wanna do another one because this will help people, I hope. So, what we're gonna be doing in this video is, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a thumbnail, a Minecraft thumbnail specifically. If you've always wondered how people get like 3D thumbnails of their Minecraft person, and you don't know how to get to look like that, and then you just, you, you're lost for words. I'm gonna show you a kind of easy way that did take me a very long time to learn how to do this, but I'm gonna show, it how, show you guys how to do it. It's very technical, but if you're really, really desperately, like, very... I don't know, creative and you really, really want to do this and you just really desperately want to make a thumbnail for Minecraft to make it look good, then this tutorial is for you, I guess. My, like, favorite thing in the world to do is make a Minecraft thumbnail. I don't know why, it's just very fun. You can do pretty much anything in the world, whatever you want, and it's just so creative and fun to do. It's a way to express yourself through your thumbnail, basically. Now, don't get me wrong, you can make other thumbnails with this method, just not one part of the method. I'm going to show you guys the Minecraft part, but I'm also going to show you guys how to make another thumbnail for anything else that you want to make, basically. But yeah, this is basically just a thumbnail slash Minecraft rig tutorial, I guess I'm going to call it. Uh, if you want to make thumbnails in this, like, like if you want to outline your text and stuff and do all this fancy stuff, then I'm going to show you guys how, so let's get into it. So, the first thing we're going to cover is we're going to cover the blender part of this tutorial because that's going to take the longest. You're also going to need your picture from your Minecraft person, your Minecraft skin, to be able to make the thumbnail for Minecraft. So, we're just going to do the Minecraft part first, okay? Okay, so, let's get into the blender part of this tutorial. So, you're going to want to click the first link I leave in the description. So, you can watch this video if you want to, it'll teach you some stuff, but I just want you guys to go down here to show more and click download rig here. You can subscribe to these guys because they're awesome. They've pretty much taught me everything I know about Blender. So you want to click that and open up this Google Drive thing. Uh, if you don't have it, I don't really know what it'll do. I'm not I'm not that gotten that far into it yet, but I just know you click the little link, it brings you to your Google Drive and it shows you what you're downloading. Don't worry, it's safe. I've downloaded it twice now. So you're gonna wanna go over here to this little download arrow thing that says download when you hover over it. You wanna just click that. You'll open up this whole other thing, but at the bottom of your screen, you'll see blackplasmarig.zip. And that's the thing we need. You can close out of this now. You can close out of that. Now you got your black plasma rig. All you had to do, if it didn't go to your desktop right away, was just click it and hold it. And then you want to drag it. You can see the text floating above it. That means you're holding it. So you want to click it, and you want to drag it to the corner, the right bottom corner of your screen, and then just release. Mine automatically goes there because I set it to, as soon as I download something, it just goes instantly on my desktop. I don't know why I did that, but it's just, that's what I've done. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the description again, and you're going to go to blender.org, and it'll bring you here. And this is Blender. This is how you're going to make your Minecraft thumbnails. If you have a different version than I do, you're going to want to click this little thing down here and you're going to find whatever version yours is. Mine is a Windows 64-bit installer. You can look up how to figure out if you're a 64-bit or not. Or I can just leave this little clip here of the last video I did that showed me and it will show you guys how I tell if I'm a 64-bit or a 32-bit. Click this if you right-click so this little window pops up. Uh, you go to System and as soon as you click System, this big thing will pop up. Don't click anything on the screen. It's not really going to help you do anything and it says system type and then it says 64-bit operating system and stuff like that and the 64-bit is what type my computer is this is how you tell if you're a 64-bit or a 32-bit once you've figured out which one you are you want to download the right installer if you're windows 32-bit you'll download this one if you're windows 64-bit you'll install this one if you're mac or linux you'll just do it on one of these i am a 64-bit so i'm gonna be clicking that one and then it'll say, thanks for downloading Blender. And it'll pop up in the corner of your screen. Then you want to wait for this thing to load up and download and all that stuff. And then you're going to want to click it. Once you click it, it'll say opening Blender. And then a thing will pop up. If we'll wait for that to pop up right now. There it goes. Uh, then it's going to calculate stuff. And then you're going to just hit next. And you're going to agree to the terms. Hit next again. Next again. Install. It'll install. You might have to search for it on your little search bar down here. If it doesn't pop up on your desktop, you'll just type in Blender and see if it shows up. Blender desktop app. It shows up for me because it's on my desktop. Uh, but if it doesn't show up for you, that means you probably didn't download it right. But if it does show up, then you're good. Uh, but I'm going to cancel this because I already have Blender installed. So, once you've installed Blender, uh, it should be somewhere in your files. You could go to your little file down here and look for it, or you could type it in the search bar and see if it shows up. It should be in there after you've installed it. Make sure it's on your desktop so you can easily access it, or you can right-click and you can hit 
pin to taskbar. I have unpin because it's already pinned to my taskbar, as you can see down there. But if you hit pin to taskbar, you can always access it down there, which I have done. Once you've got all this, you want to make a new folder. You want to call it Blender. I have one, but it's called Minecraft Animations, and it's got a bunch of different folders in it for when I animate Minecraft. I'm just going to call this one Blender, and I'm going to drag in this rig. And you're just gonna leave Blender on your desktop. I'm just gonna put it right down here where it was. Oh, or it's gonna go all the way up there. Okay, then. So, Blender is now a folder on your desktop. So, now you're gonna finally wanna open Blender. Click on Blender, and this big scary thing will pop up, but it's nothing. And then it'll load. Uh, Blender, I have been using it for a while now. I've been using it for a year. I can't believe that. Uh, but once you've opened up Blender, this is where things get really technical, and, uh, you can just close out of this by clicking. Uh, this is where things get really technical, and you don't know what you're doing. Things look really weird and crap, you know? This is when I had a bunch of struggle- struggle. I was struggling, and I was in trouble, is what that was supposed to be. I was struggling, and didn't know what to do. Well, here I am to assist you. <laughs> the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you wanna get rid of this cube. So, if you don't know what to do, you know what, I'll just edit it on the screen. Uh, so you guys can see what key I'm clicking. So, what you want to do is, you see how I'm rotating it around like this, because I have a little wheel on my mouse. If you don't have a wheel on your mouse, or you don't have one of those, or you have like don't even have a mouse, then really all you can do is go Shift plus F, and you can move around, and it'll be really slow at first, but if you hold Shift while you move around, and by the way, how you move around is WASD on your keyboard. It's kind of like playing Minecraft. And shift is how you go faster. Use the mouse to look around, that's that's pretty much it. That's how I get around a lot. But you can also, I believe, while you're in shift F, if you want to go up, you just hold E, and it'll fly up. If you hold shift, it'll go faster. Q goes down, and if you hold it, it goes faster. Basically, holding shift while you're in the camera mode like this makes pretty much everything go faster. So, once you lock your view on the cube, you're going to want to click it. You want to right-click the cube. And then you're going to want to hit X on your keyboard and hit delete and it'll say you want to delete this and you'll say yes and you'll hit delete so there's nothing here now you see this light over here which you want to get rid of this little dot over here you want to hit x on that and you want to delete that too you don't want to delete this because this is the camera so if you don't know how to get into your camera you can if you have a numpad on your keyboard you can simply hit zero and you'll look around the same way if you hit shift f you'll look around the camera same way you do out there held shift you'll move faster uh and that's basically how you do that. But if you don't have zero on your numpad and you want to get into your camera, you just go in here to view, hit camera, and it'll go into it as simply as that. I use zero because it's just faster. Crap. I think I made two cameras. Yes, I did. But control Z is how you undo. If you also want to undo, you just go up here to tool, you hit history, you hit undo. Uh, but I usually just hit control Z because it's just the fastest way and you're already on your keyboard trying to fly around like this and it's just there. All right. So for this... Uh, tutorial. I believe I'm going to be doing Cycles Render, not Blender Render. So you're going to click up here and you want to change it to Cycles Render. But the reason I use Cycles is because it's faster. It makes it look better quality. It just looks better all around, and it's just it's just better. For if you have a fast computer, I would always re recommend using Cycles. But if you're making an animation, it's going to go really slow and download for like two years because. Cycles is like the most high power you can get or you can do blender render if you're feeling like it I don't know if this rig I have works for blender render. It's just safe to go for cycles I'm gonna be using cycles for this So what you're gonna want to do next is you're gonna want to change from settings over here on this tab I'm gonna change my frame rate to 30 just because I want to make sure I mean I could change it to 60 But really I think that's overkill in it, but I'm gonna do it because I, I can so in blender render It's very simple to go into transparent background you just click the little camera up here, you scroll down to see shading, the shading tab, and you hit sky and you change it to transparent, and if you go into your camera by going over here, or hitting zero on the numpad, it'll bring you in here and you can hit up here at the top, render, render image, and it's transparent. There's nothing there because it's transparent. But if you're in cycles, I think all you have to do is just go to film and hit transparent, I think. That's how it works. I'm not sure. It's been a minute since I made a transparent background. Yes, I believe that's all you have to do. But we'll really get into transparent background once I have something in here so I can tell if it's transparent. But first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in your Minecraft skin into this little area here. So, what you're going to want to do is, if you want to get rid of this little thing over here where the tools tab is, you just hit T, you can get rid of that. So, to move things around, all you got to do is hover over the lines until this little arrow appears and you just click and you hold and then you drag back and forth. But yeah, let's go to File and Append, I believe is what it is. Then you want to look for, through your documents. So, I made a little bit of a boo-boo in the beginning. 
if your folder was, say, on your desktop and you wanted it up here so it was easier to get to and you had a big blender folder here so you could just reach it easily, I'll keep it on my desktop. So, once you've put the zip file for the rig that we downloaded in the beginning, once you've put it in a folder called Blender, you can name it whatever you want, really, uh, you just click the folder, you go into it where you put the rig, click wherever you put it, and then you want to right-click and hit Extract All. Then you hit Extract again, and it should extract into this folder and pop up on the screen. You can get rid of that, but it's in the folder now. Then, back onto Blender, we hit File, Append, and then we go to Desktop, and it says Blender right here, and then you click that, and then Black Plasma Rig, and then you click that, and then I'm going to go for Black Plasma Rig Blend. I don't really know what this one is. I've never messed with it, but I'm going to click this. Then you're going to want to go to Object, and then you're going to hit A on your keyboard. You're just going to hit A, it's going to select everything, and you're going to hit Append from Library. 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 Who's Barry? I don't know. So, there he is in the in the scene. You want to hit Shift F, fly towards him, hold Shift, get closer, or go faster. And then he's just a big blob, as you can see. How do I how do I fix this? He's a, he, My person is a blob. How do I fix the blob? Well, you're going to change this little white circle to Material. Before, when I used Blender Render, it would be texture and all that. Now that I'm using Cycles Render, it is now Material instead. So, you're gonna click the little square around his feet, and you're just gonna from, go from Object Mode to Pose Mode, and all these bones will light up. You click them by right-clicking, you hit R on your keyboard, and you can rotate it. Basically, everything is based off of a right-click. Right click selects things, and then all the all the left click does is just make this little circle move around like this. I think the little circle is where things go when you pin them in or like import them in. I don't really know what it's for. I don't really ask questions. I just kind of do what I'm supposed to be doing, and then I get out of here. This thing looks all technical and you know weird looking, but it's really not. This is very. It's a lot simpler than the last rig I had. It's a lot better as well. What you're gonna do is you if you don't like a head layer, if you don't like the moving eyeballs and the mouth, you can just click the little head thing up here and dra hit G and drag it up and it all disappears like that just magically but I want to have a head layer I want to show you guys how to animate eyes and stuff on a girl skin because most girls have their skins have like two wide eyes and this skin does not so I'm gonna click this little Steve floating on his shoulder and then I'm gonna want to go drag this closer and hit the little texture thing right here the little circle the material texture thing and you want to go down and I'm going to click this little file thing to unpack it. Yes, I want to do that. An error creating it, but it made it anyway. It said it had an error, but it made it anyway. And it'll glitch like this for some weird reason. It won't let you hit X on the thing. It won't let you exit it out. It does do that. There is, there's two different ways you can get your skin onto this thing. That's the first way. I'll have you unpack it, but it won't let you exit it. Like, let you get rid of the skin. If it is packed already, then it'll just let you hit X and you just import another one in. So, I'm gonna do it my old-fashioned way, the way I did it in the very beginning to get my skin onto this rig. Go up here to the very top where these little lines are, and then your mouse will turn to a plus symbol. You wanna click on that little thing, you wanna click and hold, and then you wanna drag to the left, towards the Steve over there. And then there's two of him, but that's only because you're in the same little thing right here. So, you wanna click this little cube, and you want to go to UV Image Editor, UV Image Editor thing right here, and you want to click that. And then, you want to find your Steve, which he's the only thing in here right now, so you want to click him. And then you can see that that's the Steve skin. And what you want to do after that is, you want to just, you want to hit this little thing right here, the image thing, and you want to hit replace image. Because now that you've unpacked him over here, you don't have to do it again over there. And then you gotta just find where your skin is, honestly. So, once you've loaded it in, it should look like this. It should pop up on there. And then you can just click the little plus thing again, and drag back to where it was. Like, drag to the right, and this little highlighted arrow will appear, and you release. And then it disappears. It's gone. It was never here. So, if you fly around, everything looks alright. Like, everything's in the proper place. Except, uh, there's no eyes. So... What your dilemma will be once you download your skin, like once you open your skin, you'll have your eyes already on the skin. So what you want to do is you want to go to wherever you made your skin, and you want to load up your skin, whichever skin you're going to use for this. So I've opened up my skin, my main skin that has the face and everything with it, and you want to just zoom in or whatever you use to edit. And I just use, I use uh, Nova Skin. I open up my skin here, and you're going to want to get rid of the head layer so you can access the face. And you want to select the color of your face's skin. Of, of your of the color of skin on your face, basically, is what I'm trying to say, but I can't do it right. And you want to basically just 
draw over your eyes. You don't need those. You don't need them at all. And I'm going to keep my eyelashes as well because I use those in the, my skins. And then you want to select the head layer again. You want to hit save. You want to hit save again. And then you can hit download up here. An unnamed PNG goes up at the bottom. You want to just drag that to your desktop. Then, once it's on your desktop, you want to rename it to whatever, you know, main skin faceless. You have to call it faceless so you can tell which one is the main skin and which one's faceless. So, this is my main skin, but faceless. And I'm going to put it, I guess, in the Blender rig folder thing. And I'm going to go here. And I'm going to do the line thing again. And I'm going to go to UV image editor. And I'm going to click my Steve PNG, it's still called. And I'm going to go to image replace image go to my desktop go to blender and click main skin faceless and then bam it's faceless here but it still has the eyes you want to get rid of this again uh i know i'm going a little bit fast but because i try to remember this as i'm doing it so it's you know but you can rewind it several times i'll explain it on the screen sometimes as you can see the eyes are all the way up in the eyebrows and they're not where they're supposed to be it kind of looks derpy so you want to get up really close to the face really up close and personal and you want to click this little circle in between the eyes you want to hit g and want to drag down if you drag down perfectly to where the eyes meet the eyebrows like this that should be good and the eyebrow they give you eyebrows themselves but if you hit the little circle in between uh, the little square in between the eyebrows and you hit s you can scale them down so no one sees them. And then they're just little tiny, tiny specks. So, you can also do the same thing with the mouth. There's a little square in between all of the features. There's a square in between the mouth. You hit G and you can move it around. Uh, also, if you do something and you want to undo it while you're still clicking it, you just hit right click and it goes back to where it was. Or if you say you actually move your mouth all the way over here, you can just hit Control Z on your keyboard and it goes back there. So... You hit the little, the little square. I don't know why I keep calling it a circle. Uh, I don't know my shapes, people, okay? So you click the little square in between, and you can move it around like this. But what we're going to do is, so we can get the two eyes, you're going to move the mouth down. You're going to hit G, and then you're going to hit Z, so it goes straight down and doesn't move around. Uh, you're going to hit Z, or you're going to hit G, then Z, then move it down. And then you're going to do this. You're going to click the little tiny like rectangle below the eye, and you're going to hit G and drag it down. Uh, to however really long you want it. Like, it can go pretty far. I'm going to make it like a double Y kind of thing. So, you can do the same thing to the other one. I'm going to make it about there. So, I'm going to match them up a little bit. There we go. And, if you back up, you see these little tiny dots in front of their face, like these things right here, these circles? I click the thing itself, like the little green line around the circles. And you want to hit S and then Z. And it will scale the eyes. And then you can hit S then X. And then you want to expand it to the side. And then if you get really close, you can see it's kind of looking like a skin now. It kind of looks like a normal person's face, you know? So, once you've got that, you you think, my eyes though, my eyes are not purple. Also, if you see the little white over here, uh, you can just click this and drag it over so it doesn't have the white. There we go. You can basically use these little square, the circle things to move them around. That's how you look back and forth, you know? So there we go. My Minecraft skin's set up, but my eyes on my skin are not purple. So... What you're going to do is you're going to click the little U floating over here. Go back to the skin thing, which you could now get rid of because you opened up a skin. What you want to do is you want to click the little eyes, and you can select the color right here. And you just move it around on the wheel, and that's how you get the color. But to get the exact color of my eyes, I have a little website I use for the hex color codes. If you hit hex over here, you can backspace this and click whatever, like, just type in, like, hashtag, whatever, you know? See, so if you go zero, 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 all the zeros, that's black. That's just black. So, I have a little website. I'm going to link it down below as well. Alright, so, what you're going to need if you want to make your eyes the exact color that they are, or at least close, and always have them be the same color in every single thumbnail you make, what you want to do is, you're going to want to go to the description below again. It'll bring you here, hex color codes. So, this is where you look for the exact color of your eyes. I'm going to just select this one right here, Deep Sky Blue 2. And you're going to want to... Like, click and drag over top of this. And then hit copy. And then what you can do if you want, you can open up, like, a word thing in your computer. And hit control V and paste it there. That way you always have it. And then you save. You know, you hit save, file, save, and then you save. And then it saves it as, oh, hex I color. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to copy that. And then you're going to go back to Blender. And you're going to go to the color... And then you're going to go to, it'll be on RGB like this, and it'll be all the way up here somewhere. It'll be on RGB, but you want to click hex. 
and then you're going to want to backspace that and hit Control v and then click out of it and then your eyes will turn to whatever color you just picked basically i'm gonna leave my eyes as that color even though they're probably not exactly that color it's just as close as i'm gonna get so also if you're wondering what all these little things floating around your head do so this little square next to your little minecraft skin dude is how you make the mouth open and close so say you're shocked oh you want, don't want to make it too wide, because then you'll have like a double chin down here, like in real life, like I do. You'll have this little weird gap down there. So what you want to do is you make sure that you don't open the mouth too wide, or if you do want to open up wider, you can click the middle, hit G, Z, and drag it up a little bit more, but then the eyes will have, probably have it, but that's a good, that's a good length. Uh, this little square over here is the teeth, so you can make it smile or no teeth at all, but then if you drag it all the way up, your teeth will come out of your chin for some reason. I don't know... I don't know what does that, but that's what happens if you drag it all the way up. And hit G, and then you want to drag it down somewhere to where it shows a little bit of teeth possibly, but not teeth through the chin or anything. Something like that. Say you're shocked. Say you're sad. You know, you want to click the top bar up here, and you want to hit R, and you can rotate it down, then hit G. Well, actually, just hit G first, and then hit R. <laughs> and then you'll be sad, you know? Or you can be angry, you know? You never know what you can mess with. Every little feature does something. Like, these little things down here, they make the mouth do something weird. I don't know. I don't really know what all these do. They just kind of move the po body parts around a little bit for you without you having to do it yourself. But anyway, the head thing, it just gets rid of the face and all that detail stuff. So you can you can have a non-animated face if you want, but I like having the animated face. It gives it more emotion, I guess. These little uh, red and blue bars inside of your skin and the green ones, if you click those and hit R or G... But not, not G, not G. <laughs> Mainly R to rotate, because if you hit G, you don't move it. Uh, but for the feet, you want to click the little squares. You don't want to click the bars in the feet like this. You don't really want to do it like that, because they don't really do anything if you hit R. You want to click these little tiny, tiny squares down here, and then hit G, and it'll move that little leg around, you know? You can make them pose however you want. Uh, and the little green bar inside the head, if you hit R, X goes up and down. R, Z goes left and right, and I believe R, Y goes side to side. Uh, when you hit R and then hit one of those keys, R, X goes up and down, R, Y left and right, R, Z tilts it like back and forth, which doesn't really do anything for the arms. Really for my arms, I just click the middle one and I hit R, X and I give it like a little bit of life and then I get R, X again and I bend this back a little and then there, it gives them life, you know? And if you hit the little bottom bar in your body and you hit G, Z, you can make them squat down a little bit and do like a little dance, you know? Jump around. Jump around. Jump around. So that's basically how you get, make them like pose, I guess. Uh, once you've done all this, I'm gonna make him pose the way I want him to pose because, well, want her because it's me. But say you wanted a sword or something. Say you wanted to have a weapon of some sort, you know? Say you wanted to fight people, you know? Say you were fighting someone in, like, a thumbnail and you wanted, like, a diamond sword in your hand because you killed someone with a diamond sword in the video. Well, you're gonna need a whole separate rig for that. Depending on whether you're using Cycles Render or Blender Render, it's gonna depend on which rig of these you get. So, say you want a weapon or, like, an animal, like a wolf or something in your thumbnail. Any animal or anything, any block from Minecraft needs to be in your thumbnail. Like, say you want a bed. Maybe you made a Bed Wars video and you want a bed to be in your thumbnail. You want to go to the fourth link in the description below. And it'll bring you to another page, of course. This is where the fact that I use Cycles Render comes in handy. First of all, the rig that I'm using does not work in, cycle, in Blender Render. You have to use Cycles for this. When you're animating, Blender Render is a lot easier to use on your computer because it's, you know, it doesn't, you know, take as long to render animations because it's not full-on Cycles. But Cycles is, I think, better for pictures because then the pictures come out more detailed and they don't have all those little tiny fuzzies on them. I use Cycles for pretty much everything now, even animations, uh, but this is a tutorial for Cycles only. So, we're going to go to the link in below, the, the fourth link, I believe, and you're going to want to go to rimdenise.net, and you're going to want to go to Downloads and then Blender Rigs. Once that shows up, you're just going to want to click Minecraft Blender Rig, and it'll pop up another separate screen as well, and you're going to want to scroll down, and then you'll have Internal and cycles. Internal is Blender Render. Cycles is the one we're going to be using for this tutorial. So, if you have a different Minecraft rig, if you don't have the rig I told you to install, then Blender Render will work. Uh, I made another video tutorial with Blender Render, so if you want to make a Minecraft person with uh, Blender Render then and you can't use cycles, then 
that that tutorial will come in handy. But this one is specifically for cycles. So we're gonna install cycles, download Minecraft rig, and of course it'll download again. I don't know if you have to extract this one or not, but we're gonna find out. <laughs> All right, so once it's finished, you wanna click and hold, and then you wanna drag it to the bottom right of your screen and hold it there for a second, and then the desktop will appear and then just release. So once that's there, you wanna drag that as well into your Blender folder. Just extract it, you'll have both of them in here. Extracted and not extracted just to be safe depending. I don't know if it works or not, but I'm gonna extract it here So after it's extracted uh, It'll pop up again. It'll open up the extracted thing, but you just want to close that I'm pretty sure you do have to extract it I'm like a hundred percent sure I think at this point so the two extracted things and then the two non extracted are right here so the cycles Minecraft rig extracted is what you have to do you can delete these if you want because they don't really do anything But I'm gonna leave them in here. So close out of that go back to blender you're going to go to file and depend again and you're going to want to go to desktop wherever you want to go you don't have to go to desktop you just go wherever you put your folder wherever you put your folder and i'm going to go to cycles minecraft rig and then you're going to see all these different things you're going to have blocks you're going to have character you're going to have item mob mods simple and you're going to want to go depending on what you have depending on what you want in your thumbnail item and then object is how you get like swords and uh, potato and stuff like that like items that you hold in your hand then if you hit the little arrow up here then it'll go back and then back again say you want a mob then you just click mob and then you go to object you always go to object by the way every time you click one of these things you always go to object like mob then object then it'll show all this stuff here so say you want uh, let's say I want a wolf you just go to the search bar up here and you type in wolf and then it shows up all the things. So you want to click the wolf, the bones wolf. That's how you move the bones around and make it pose. Mob wolf is like the body itself. Then the drivers, I don't know what really that does, but you need it to. Shift click mob wolf. Shift click driver's wolf. And you want to hit append from library. Then you don't see it anywhere. You're like, where's my wolf? I thought I had a wolf in here. Shift F and look around for your little wolf. There he is. So <laughs> you're going to want to click the bottom of him, the little square around him. And you want to hit G Y or not G Y G X and move it over to your skin. Move him over here, you know? Make him stand next to your skin if you want. What animal do you want? It really depends. Uh, say you want, a say you want uh, several animals of different kinds. Say you want a, a pig. Say no, say you want the wolf killing a sheep. Say you want a sheep, okay? Then it, then there it is, you know? You just have the sheep there. Say you want the ender dragon in your, uh, in your, in your little scene here. You don't click this. You don't click that up there. You click mob, ender dragon, and ender dragon bones. And you hit a pin from library. And there he is in all his glory. Drag him up to the top, up here where you are. So, say you want to be riding the Ender Dragon. Then, of course, you would click the little square around your person. Hit G, X, G, Y, just to move it around. Uh, G, Y moves it up, of course, and down, up and down. And then G, X moves it left and right. So, you're going to put it up on the dragon. Hit R and Z to rotate it. Shift F, of course. And then you're gonna go, and you're gonna click the little middle part of your body. The middle part of your Minecraft skin's body, and we're gonna click the middle and hit Z and drag it all the way down to the ground. All the way down to where the Ender Dragon's body is. Then you're gonna click the little squares that your feet were at, and click them and hit X. Move them to the left and whatever the direction they're supposed to be in. Rotate them, you know, do what you do. So there you go. Say you wanted to ride the Ender Dragon with a wolf on you, like with a wolf there too. Say so you just wanted a wolf to be a part of there. Also, the reason, uh, if you want to pose the Ender Dragon itself, you just click the little ring around him, and you go from object to pose mode, and then you can open his mouth and crap, like hit his mouth, the little bar in his mouth, hit R, move it open and closed and stuff. Wings, move them up, you know, make it look like you're actually flying on an Ender Dragon. Same thing with the wolf. You just click the little square around him, you hit object, and you change it to pose mode. You can click and drag him onto the back. Oh, crap. Okay, see, if this happens to you, if the little wires show up like this, it's because you went out of texture or material mode, whichever one you're using. I'm going back into material. Uh, that was uh, wireframe. So if you accidentally go into wireframe, you just want to go back into material. But anyway, what you want to do is, once you get the wolf, like, kind of near him, like, on his back, just, just where you want him. And, you know, put him where you want him, then put him on his back. You can then click his little bone in his booty, hit R, X to drag it down. Lift up his tail a little bit by hitting, like, by just clicking the top bone and hitting R. 
Then, you want to click the little bar sticking up out of his back and hit G, Z, and drag it down. Then you can move his feet forward like this. Oh, say, though, you wanted your wolf to have a collar like it does in the actual game. Say you wanted your wolf to have, like, a red collar. You go back to the Hex website, and you can find the exact color of your dog's collar. Uh, but say you wanted your wolf's collar to be black, you could just drag it down. But... When I do that, there's nothing there, you say. Why is there nothing there? Well, it's because you didn't click this thing up here. The thing that says wolf. You want to put that into pose mode. And then, you want to find that the one that says collar at the bottom. Which I believe is this one, right here. See, it says wolf collar. So you want to click G, drag it up. And then you see the black collar you want. It is not looking really black. It kind of looks gray. Why does it look gray? Alright, so say the collar on your dog, you want it to be black, but it looks gray. So you want to go over here to surface where it says mix shader and you want to just hit, I believe, a mission. And then it'll turn white, but you just click the white and you drag it all the way down to black and then it looks black. That is just it's as easy as that. So then you just have your dog behind you and that's pretty much that. And then say you want to render this picture out because you, you know, you want to see it as what it looks like in the final thing. You go into your camera. But again, if you don't have the numpad zero, you can just go to view, hit camera, and then hit shift F, and hold shift to fly faster. Then you just find a nice, lovely angle of you and your wolf. Uh, if the wolf is not looking at the camera, you can just go and adjust it to look at the camera. So you can like click the little square around it, hit rotate, and make him look over here. And then there he is, looking at the camera. You can make him look like, you can make his head aim down a little more by clicking the little bar on his head. Uh... And then like you know, rotate down and then turning it a little bit and there we go and then you can have you like like you're riding a roller coaster or something you can have your arms in the air or something like r z and you can rotate it around and then you can bend it a little bit yeah r x lift it no no not that r x lift it up and then bam we're like freaking out on top of this ender dragon you can move your head around like this oh no Oh, I'm scared for my life. Okay, and then you want to just hit render image up here. You want to hit render, then render image, as you can see on the screen. Once you've done that, it looks really dark. Like, you can see your Minecraft skin and everything, but it looks really dark and hard to see. So, as you can see on my screen, there's a gray background. It's not transparent, and I'm, I look very, like, black and dark. What you want to do now is you want to go over to the Earth tab uh, on the little window thing over here. And you want to hit ambient occlusion, that'll help with the darkness. Alright, once you've done the ambient occlusion, you want to go over to the camera, and you want to go to film, and hit transparent. Then, there's more things here you want to mess with. So, if, say you were rendering an animation, and you wanted to download it as a video itself, not PNGs, or you want to just do PNGs. You can just click the PNG thing, and do AVI JPEG, AVI, you know, one of these, you know, just any video format you, you like to use. You want to go to performance. And then the X and Y are how big the little squares, like if I hit render image, how big these little squares are. They're 64 by 64. That's how big the squares are. But you can make it like, I think the highest you can go is 256 by 256. And then if you hit render and then render image. So the highest it goes is 256. As you can see, the squares are a lot bigger now. And it is, in fact, transparent in the back. And then it'll just render out, but, you know, you could wait for that and then take the image as it is. But you could also make a different image. Like, this is just my test. This, I mean, I mean, you could do this if you want. If there's a video where you needed this for, like, I've done it as a thumbnail before. I'll put it up on the screen uh, where I was riding the Ender Dragon and all my wolves looked, like, terrified. But I also was fighting the Ender Dragon. So, say you wanted to use this picture in a thumbnail. This is where it gets technical. So once you've got your picture all rendered out, I'm going to go ahead and render this out, and I'll be back in a second. Let me get a nice angle here. All right, the image is done. Once your image is done rendering, you want to go down to image and hit save image, uh, save as image. And then you want to just save it anywhere. I'm going to save this one to my desktop. I'm going to put it in my Blender folder, actually. I'm going to call it the end. Then, once it's saved, you can just hit escape and close out of that. So, once you've got your image, you're like, okay, this is all nice, but how do I make a thumbnail with it? This is where the thumbnail part comes in. You're gonna wanna go to the fifth link in the description below, the one that says paint.net, and then it'll open up this thing, and it looks all complicated, like you could get a virus at any second. You probably could, but not because I'm here. So, you're gonna wanna click paint.net 4.0.19 or whatever. Yours will probably say something different depending on how long in the future you watch this video. Uh, you're gonna click that, 
And then it'll open up this thing. And it also looks like you could get a virus at any second. You're going to want to go down to this download down here that says dot PDN. And you're going to want to click that. And then it'll open up a different thing. And then you're going to want to click paint dot net 4.0.19. Again, over here. Again on the right. And you're going to click that again. And then it'll download. Yay. It'll download into a zip. But you're just going to want to click the zip, I believe. You just click it. And then, it'll have paint.net installed. You want to click the application, double click it. You can either go to custom or express. Or some people are like, oh, well I want to do custom. No, don't do a custom. Because that does everything, it makes you do everything basically yourself. This, you want to do express, because that's what everyone uses, and it's the best thing to use. Just hit express, and then hit next, then hit I agree, next again, and then it'll prepare to install, removing previous version. Oh no, it's removing mine. Oh no. I guess I'm updating then. <laughs> Alright, so... As you can see, it, it updated mine, and now it's um, installing a new one, so I'm going to wait, I guess. <laughs> also, while Paint.net is installing, I want to give you guys a little quick tip about Blender. If you ever want to come back and not have to do all this crap again and re-bring in your, uh, your little dude in and bring in all this stuff again, do all the settings again, you just want to go up to File, hit Save As, and then you want to go just save it, I guess, to your desktop, to the Blender thing, or whatever your Blender folder is, you just want to save it here, honestly. Uh, you're going to want to call it Thumbnails. This will be where you make your thumbnails from now on. Then, whenever you want to make a thumbnail, all you got to do is, this is done, all you got to do is go to your little folder that you made, and then in it, we'll have the little blender symbol, and it'll say Thumbnails, and if you just click it, it opens it up. So, you just hit Finish, I guess. If you want it to start out by itself, then go ahead, right ahead and keep that checked, but I'm going to hit Finish now. Okay, so, opens up Paint.net. Here we are. What is all this crap, is what you're thinking. When you first open Paint.net, it's going to have you be holding the tool brush, like the paintbrush thing that you draw with uh, Control z to get rid of things, by the way, on here as well. I'm going to do the little blue arrow up here. Move selected pi pixels. I can't talk. I almost said pickles. Move selected pickle. Control and minus on your keyboard will zoom in and out, I guess. But you can also just use this little slider down here to zoom in and out. Uh, and if you hold space bar and click and drag, it'll move around. So... Once you've opened Paint.net, you're probably wondering, what do I do with this crap? I'm going to leave a link in the description below as well to get a template to, for the exact size of a thumbnail. Uh, the sixth link in the description will be for this thumbnail. If you just click the link in the description below, it should bring you here. And you'll wait a second until it pops up like so. And then it'll pop up with this right... If it'll load today, it'll go down for you. There it goes. Okay. It opens up this thing. If this is not open up for you, if this is a problem for you, you can just type in at on your Google thumbnail template. And if it says 1280 by 720, then that is the right size for a thumbnail. But this is the one I myself use for every single thumbnail. So you just want to right click, hit save image as, save it wherever you want. But I already have it saved. I'm going to just save it to my desktop uh, and call it thumbnail template. So you just drag it onto paint.net manually like this. Or what you can do is you can just go on paint.net, hit file, hit open, and then you can find where you saved it. Mine is on my desktop. Then it opens up the thumbnail template. And then you can get rid of this thing over here. You can just close out of that and hit don't save. This is the thing you really need. So once you get the thumbnail template and you've opened and it's on paint.net and you've got the picture that you needed on Blender, you're going to want to just start messing around with this now. So, you're going to want to hit this little square with a little green dot on it, add new layer, and it'll go up above. If you click and drag, you can put it below, but really for this, you just want it to be on top. Put this layer above the thumbnail template. Find a picture on the internet for like anything. So like if I go on Google, I just type in the end on, uh, in the end Minecraft, it'll pop up pictures of the end. And I can just take literally any one of these pictures that I want, honestly. So, I have saved this now. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to get rid of that. And now I'm going to go to wherever I saved that picture. You can get any picture off the internet for whatever you're using it for. Open that. And then it'll pop up this. It'll pop up the picture in a separate thing. So up here, you have the thumbnail thing. And then you have this. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit the blue arrow, move selected pickles. And then <laughs> you're going to want to click the picture and hit control... C and that'll copy it. That'll copy whatever you just selected. Then you want to go back to the thumbnail thing and you want to control V and it'll paste it onto here. But if it doesn't perfectly fit, like say it looks like this or something, it's really close up and you want it to, you know, perfectly fit into the picture, you're going to want to hold shift 
and click the ends like there's little circles that you can see there's a circle here there's a circle on the edge and then there's a circle in the middle of all of them so you want to click the circle on the very bottom edge whichever side it's on it could literally be on that side or it could be on this side like that it really could be anywhere you want to hold shift you want to click and drag and it'll make it so it doesn't move the reason you hold shift is if you don't hold shift it'll do this it'll squish it up like that you don't want to do that control z you don't want to do that. You want it to just perfectly move it the way it always looks. So you want to perfectly fit it in. So you can zoom in to see if it perfectly fits in. And there's no, like, the little like, dotted lines going in circles, like going in a square like this. That's how you can tell where the picture actually is, like that. You're going to want to adjust that so it doesn't have any of the template in the background showing. And you want to hit Enter. Enter is basically saying you're deselecting it. Now you want to make another layer so you can put the picture you just got on Blender. You want to hit Open. You want to find it. You want to open it. And then you want to click it again, like you did with the other picture, and you want to hit Control c and go back to your main one, this one right here that has the template and the little thing, and you want to hit Control v Make sure you're on a new layer, otherwise, if you're not on a new layer, it'll look like this, and it'll move it out of the way. You don't want that. You want to make sure it's on another layer itself, and then it'll just go perfectly on there like this. Scale it by holding Shift and dragging. You can make it however big you want, like that, and it'll look like this. That's what it'll look like. Now... Say you want some text on the screen, or you want an outline around this uh, picture you just made. You want to duplicate the layer that you just made. Duplicate it over here. Now there's two of them, as you can see. And you want to hit the magic wand tool over here. You want to click the screen. You want to click it, and then you'll see it didn't select any of this stuff back here. You want to hold shift and click in, like, in between stuff. You don't want to click the ender dragon itself, because then it'll just select it like that. You want to click in between things, like that. So it'll select everything except the uh the ender dragon and yourself you just click around it like so and then make sure the little outline is going around the ender dragon not on it like that make sure there's no holes either that are missing i'm gonna go to this little square up here you want to hold control click left click hold left click and drag across the screen that way it selects the dragon and not everything else then you want to hit this little v thing, looking thing down here this little thing right here next to the t uh and you want to choose the a bigger size up here brush width you want to make sure it's all the way as big as it possibly can be uh and then whatever color you want the outline to be you'll just pick it down here i'm gonna make mine be purple and i'm gonna click and drag it across like that then after you do that you want to hit the little down arrow over here to make sure it goes below the layer that you duplicated it so like say it's like this you want to make sure this you want to click and drag and put it below that or you can just hit this little down arrow the up and down arrow also come in handy but i usually just click and drag like that so boom make sure the purple layer is below the layer that it actually has the ender dragon on it still then you want to hit enter and deselect everything then you want to go up here to effects blurs gaussian blur and then you want to make sure this is a higher number doesn't really matter how high i usually shoot for 12 makes a nice border around it or you can go for six that's a good one too i'm gonna go for 12 because it's just the one i usually pick i want mine to be thicker and look better so i'm just gonna duplicate this purple layer several times so like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten times and then you want to merge that layer down merge all merge down all the purple layers you just made so like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten bam all the layers are now merged together and then you can merge the top layer of the dragon and hit merge down and then the purple outline and the dragon itself will all be one layer like that that's how you outline something but say you want to text. What you want to do is, you want to make a new layer, again. You want to make a new layer above your little ender dragon or whatever you made, basically. Uh, whatever picture you made. You want to make another layer above it, and you want to hit the T. The T I talked about earlier. Then, you want to just click on your screen, and you'll see this little dot that's flashing, and you can just type something. So, I'm going to type the end. Look how little it is. You can't even see it. So, you want to go up here to this little 9 or whatever yours says up here. Uh, it'll be next to font. It'll be up here at the top. And you want to go down and make it just a bigger size that you can see better. It may, just make sure it looks nice on the screen, honestly. That looks good. Uh, I'm also going to change the color of it. So I'm going to change it and make it a light blue, like so. The in. I usually put these little quotations to show that it is a, like a title. So now that you have your text on the screen, 
you're gonna say, okay, but that looks kind of bland. How do I, how do I make it look better? You can change the font by clicking the little arrow next to Calibri. And you can just pick from a bunch of different fonts that are already on your computer. I have downloaded fonts from a website. Uh, I will make, I guess I can show you guys how to do that now. Um, how to download your own fonts. Let's go do that then. I'm gonna show you guys how to download your own font so you can make this look actually like totally, like totally awesome. <laughs> All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna get your own font so you can add a pretty little text to this and make it look all original. You wanna go to the seventh link below and it'll bring you here. So once you're here, you just wanna find a font that you actually like. You can click cartoon, you can click comic, you can click any of these. I'm gonna do just this one that's just powerful. I'm gonna click this one. I'm gonna hit download next to that and then a little zip file will pop up down there. What you're going to do is, you want to click and hold that and drag it down to your desktop again. Mine's already on here. So, once you have this little font that you just downloaded, you want to click it, you want to right click, and hit extract all. Once you've extracted it, it'll open up the file, or if it doesn't open it up for you, you can just open it by clicking the one that you just extracted. Then what you're going to do is, you want to click the little uh, folder that you just extracted, and you want to see the little thing that says A next to it, you want to keep that on your screen. So, minus that. Go into your documents uh, by just going, I guess, opening up another one. What you're going to want to do is you're going to open up your this PC thing. This is what yours will look like. It'll look kind of like this. If you go to this PC, you'll have a Windows and then C. You want to click that and you want to go to Windows again. And then you want to scroll to you see fonts. You want to open that. You want to click that, double click it. Okay, so once you've opened this, it'll show all your fonts here. What you want to do is you want to go back to that folder that you had your, that you downloaded your font in and you extracted. Uh, and you want to drag powerful, which is what mine's called, and you want to drag that into your fonts and just hit, and it'll have copy and you'll just release, release click. You just close out of all of that, go back to paint, mine deselected, so I'm going to have to type it again uh, so I can change the font. So I'm going to go the end, click the little thing down here to move it around. Then you go to font and you just find the name that yours was. Mine started with a P, mine was powerful, it is. And then you see powerful right there. And look how big it looks with this this uh, size I've picked. So let me go down to that one. As you can see, this font has some difficulties. So I'm going to go use one of my other fonts that I downloaded, uh, which is Scream Again, possibly. Yeah, that one looks nice. So once you've got the font and you've got the color you want, you know, you're going to want to duplicate it. Again, you want to duplicate that layer as well. And we're going to put an outline around it like we just did. Going to go to the wand tool, click the outer layer like this, then hold shift, click inside, like if you have like a D or an O, you're going to click shift click the inside of that so it clicks the inner of everything, so it doesn't have like the color you're about to pick in the inside. And then you're going to click this little square thing, hold control, hold, I believe, right click, I think it is, and then you want to drag... And if that doesn't work, I was probably wrong, and it's probably left click. I'm not really sure. Get my right and my left confused, okay? So, if something doesn't work for you, try doing the opposite click, because I get those confused sometimes. So, once you've dragged it, and it's, it's like, blinking around the text itself, the line and curve thing, you want to go to that. And then, you can just make this a darker color than you've chosen. Like, say I just want it to be a darker color of, like, maybe, maybe like a dark blue. Like a dark blue around it. So, I would click and drag across... Then I would hit the little down arrow to get it down below, and I would hit enter. And then I go to effects, blurs, Gaussian blur, and then I would go to 12 again. And then I would duplicate it 10 times like I did with the other one. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I think 5 looks decent. 5 looks alright, so I'm gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Bam. I'm gonna put the light blue on top of the dark blue and make them into 1, like so. Then, you can just move it around wherever you want, honestly, after that. And you can hold shift and scale it to make it smaller, like this, you know. It can just be wherever you want. That, that's usually how I do that. That's how I make the thumbnail. And say you want, uh, you know, to, it's like a, ep like, there's episodes of this. So say you want to be like a number one or like number 30. Say it's the last episode and you just click that and name it number 30. Put it in the corner, uh, duplicate it. Click the wand tool, click inside of the circle, hit the little square, drag it across, change this to black, make it black by dragging the line tool over top of it, hitting the down arrow, hitting enter, effects, blurs, Gaussian blur, okay, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, 
four, five, six. And then, uh, yeah, then you just put the, the white on top of the black. And then it's a number 30 with a little black outline around it. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Yeah. And then I'm going to put it up here. There we go. Hit enter to deselect it. Click the space bar to drag it around and like this. And there we go. So the last thing I'm going to show you guys is how to save your thumbnail. So you want to go up here to file, hit save as. It doesn't really matter if you hit save or save as. Either one works. And you want to just call it something. So I'm going to call it the end thumbnail. Just because. You can call it whatever. You're going to have to click this little thing that says save at save as type paint.net png. You want to change that to png. And then it'll save it as a png file instead of like, oh, jpeg or gif or this or that. This thing will say png. That just saves it as a file so you can come back and edit this later. But you want to save it as a png so it's a picture. And I'm going to hit save. And then it'll to pop up this thing. And you want to just hit OK. And then you want to hit flatten. And then it'll load for a second, and then there you go, you've saved your picture. And bam, there you go, you've made a thumbnail. That's how, that's exactly how simple it is. You can do your own style to it and everything. You don't have to do exactly what I did. You can put your own style into it, you can get your own custom font, you can do everything yourself, basically. It's just a matter of how you get your resources. Like, you can go look up a picture to use in the background, or you can actually take a picture on Minecraft, like screenshot something. And that's all you gotta do. Uh, after you take, uh, if you don't know how to access your Minecraft screenshots, by the way, you just go to Windows key on your keyboard and then R, and then you type in percent app data percent, not in caps, but I guess caps might work too, yeah. Doesn't matter if it's in caps or not. You want to go to your .minecraft folder, and then if you scroll down, it'll say screenshots. See, look, wildcraft, bam, I took a screenshot of that, I use it in my background for my thumbnails, and that's as easy as it is. Like, you can just rename it, you can call it wildcraft, or whatever the name of your world is, you can hit copy, and then you can paste it onto your desktop, like so, and then paste. And then, bam, you got the background already, you can open up frickin' paint, like... Look how easy this is. This is this is how easy it is, okay? You can just hit open. Once you drag it in there manually, it'll ask you if you want to open it like that. Get rid. You want to hit control Z because it put everything as one layer. Uh, you can get rid of this. You can get rid of the background for that. Make a new layer again. Click this. Control C. Control V. Keep canvas size. Scale it just a little. Move it around. And there you go. Just as easy as that, honestly. It is that easy to move a picture into the background. So once you've done this enough times, it'll become like really easy to you, but I've done it a lot already, so I'm just like talking really fast and knowing what I'm doing. I know it's really complicated sounding, but it's really not. Uh, you can make it like so they can see the house over there. Like it's that easy. It's, it's so easy to do after you've done it for a while. So yeah. That's pretty much all there is to it. Like, that task I just showed you, that process, it becomes really simple to me because I just open up the save file of thumbnails that I just showed you guys how to do. And then I just pose myself, pose whatever animal I want, and then I just use the thumbnail, you know? It's not really, it's like, yeah, it's a long, drawn out process this time, but the second time you do it, it probably won't be as difficult because you know what you're supposed to be doing. Like, the more you do it, like, every time I did it, I had to watch the video of how to do it, like, several times before I got it down. And then finally when I got down, I'm like, okay, I move this there, put that there, then yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. and then, then you were done. That's how quick it goes. Like, if you ever want to do this again, every time you make a thumbnail, you can watch this video, see all the tips that I gave you, just keep doing it over and over again, and then eventually you won't even need to watch this video anymore. Like, <laughs> it's that simple. So, I hope this was clear for you guys. I know I probably talked really fast during the entire thing. I'm just a really fast-talking person. So I apologize, but I will put what keys I pressed and all that on the screen as much as I can. Uh, if you guys have any questions or no want to know what key I pressed at what time, or you have any question whatsoever, leave it in the comments below. I will answer them. I will answer any question I get, except if there's just too many and I don't have like the patience or time to answer all of them. So I'll try to answer all the comments I get. Uh, and if you have any questions, just let me know. The next tutorial I do will be how to install Minecraft mods. So leave a like if you want to see that in the future. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody. I'm wild. Woo! 6 0. And I will see you guys next time. I'm laughing because I did the wolf thing. And it kind of looks like what I'm doing in this picture. Like, my Minecraft skin looks like it's going, woo! 6 0. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>